Hello, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I want to talk to you about how luxury YouTube is changing again and is it effectively the end of an era? Now, I recently watched videos from Deb at Wild Unfiltered and Melinda at Lux Purse Love on this topic and I really enjoyed those videos and I'm going to link their channels down below in the description box. I found them really engaging and informative and it made me think again about the change in luxury YouTube and I don't think it's contained just luxury YouTube. I think it's luxury in general that over the last number of months, year even, there has been so much change. We have all watched videos on is luxury YouTube dying? We've watched videos about I'm selling all of my stuff. I don't want this clutter anymore. I don't want to be buying luxury or designer anymore. And now we have Jerusha Couture, who for me is one of the originals. Jerusha and Minx from Minx For All were the two YouTubers that really introduced me to luxury YouTube. And Jerusha has now made a video where she has effectively said that she is taking a break, she's leaving. Now, she hasn't said that she won't ever be back, but she has said that she needs a break from this because she's finding it toxic. And in her video, she talked about how much change she had seen over the length of time that she has been on Luxury YouTube. Now, I think she's been on YouTube about 14 years. That is a huge length of time to have been on this platform and I'm sure she has seen it all. I'm sure she has watched so many YouTubers come and go, but she has now reached the decision where she has said, I need a break. I'm going from this. It's toxic. It's changed so much. It's so much about selling stuff. It's so much about not supporting your fellow YouTubers. It's not about the actual love and joy of the item or the bag. It's not about reveals and reviews and she just needs to step away from it. And Melinda herself also stepped away from YouTube for I think she said in her video it was about eight months. And I remember whenever she took that break, she also had got to the point where she said, I just need, I just need a break from this. I need to pause. And I can see how that happens because I have seen a change in YouTube and I am only watching YouTube, I think since about maybe 2019 and making videos, I think three to four years. So not as long as these other creators, but I have definitely seen a change when I first started to enjoy this content. Now, one of the things that Melinda said in her video, and I agree with wholeheartedly in relation to Jerusha, and one of the issues that has been discussed is how YouTubers change whenever they get to a certain level of subscribers and viewership. Jerusha didn't do that, to my mind. Even though Jerusha was well over 100,000 subscribers, she still would mention and talk about, and Melinda noticed this as well, smaller channels. She talked about my channel whenever I was unboxing my Birkin and how the joy that I had in that video, and she put that into one of her videos. I don't even think I'd spoken to Jerusha at that time. She talked about a lot of smaller channels and she never tried to gatekeep her audience or her viewership. And that's something that I always really respected about Jerusha. And there was comment on Deb's video and there was commentary in Melinda's video about how whenever YouTubers get to a certain size, they change. And they change in that they don't want to acknowledge smaller channels as much. And that was something that Melinda had discussed or they change in that their content completely changes. I don't watch that many very large YouTubers. I think the only YouTubers that I watch who are over 100,000 subscribers are Isabel from Isabel Style, Steph from Handbag Holic, Cassie from Cassie Thorpe, Jusui Lu. I think they're probably the bigger channels that I watch. I never watched Lydia Elise Millen and that was one of the channels that was mentioned in these videos about how Lydia's content has changed so much. I don't remember her content whenever she was talking about luxury and handbags in her collection. Her content now doesn't speak to me. I don't really watch gardening or very affluent lifestyle videos. So it's never a channel that I've watched. So I can't really speak to the change but I can see how, because I did used to watch Shay Whitney and Shay Whitney is now massive. I think, isn't she over a million subscribers? And when I started watching her, I think it was the tail end of when she still made luxury type content. And now if her channel comes up on my recommendations, it's all about Amazon really, and maybe how to look more expensive or don't wear this and don't wear that or do wear that. And they're not really the types of videos that I watch. I do think that some Amazon content has a place and can be useful. I do think a lot of it is about 
let me sell you everything that I am buying and looking at on Amazon. Now, for a small creator, that would be a very foolish business plan because Amazon pay a tiny, 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 tiny little commission if anybody clicks through your link. But if you are the size of Shea Whitney, for example, and you're selling hundreds and thousands of these things, I would imagine you're making quite a tidy income from that. So I don't really watch those large channels when they pivot and change that much. And I can see why people have become fatigued at watching channels that feel as if they're selling you things all of the time. But I do understand how that it can be seen as changing when you get to become a larger channel. And one of the things that was talked about in the videos with that is that when you become a larger channel, a lot of those people will then be doing this full time. And if you're doing this as a full time job or your employment or your business, there is a huge level of pressure on you then to make a certain amount of money if this is your main source of income. If you're doing YouTube full time, the AdSense that YouTube pays for the videos that we put out and the ads that you see on them is not very much. Don't get me wrong, I do this alongside my business. I really enjoy it. I make YouTube videos because I think they're really fun and I enjoy the process but they are a lot of work and they take a lot of time. And if I were to think about the hours that I put into making YouTube videos, if I was to go and put that time into my business, I would certainly be making more money there, but I would be completely burnt out because I wouldn't have an escape or something to come and do that's just fun and I enjoy. But yes, it does make some money. But if you were doing this full time and were trying to be reliant on YouTube's AdSense for your income, whoa, that would be a stressful situation. It fluctuates so much. There are some videos they pay so little on, some videos they pay a little bit more. I watch YouTube. There will be some creators that I watch and when I watch one of their videos, there's no ads on it. When I watch another video, there's four or five. And YouTube place the ads on the videos randomly and automatically. And it must tie into their algorithm about what they place where and how many they place. But there can be a huge difference from video to video on the same channel. And that's gonna impact how much the creator is making. So if you were trying to survive from AdSense on YouTube and that was your business, I think it would be very difficult and I think it would be very uncertain and I don't think you would be able to rely upon your income. And I think therefore, if you're going to be doing this long-term full-time, you're going to have to branch out and look at other forms of income streams to be able to survive, to take a little bit of that pressure off and to earn enough money for the amount of work that you're doing. For me personally, I can understand then why whenever you're doing it as a full-time job, you need to accept more sponsorships. And I watch a lot of business YouTube and on business YouTube, there is a sponsorship on the channels that do well in every single video. And I do not see any commentary in their comment box giving negative feedback on their sponsorships. There seems to be a difference though on luxury YouTube. There seems to be, maybe because it feels like we are selling items, although they're selling services on the business content, but there definitely seems to be more of a negative pushback on sponsored content on luxury YouTube than there is on the other channels that I watch, which are business and finance. And you will see sponsorships on those on every single video on a lot of the well-performing channels. I would also imagine that the sponsorships on the business and finance content are paying a huge amount more than the sponsorships are on our type of channel that's talking about fashion and luxury, because let's be honest, it's not Chanel and Louis Vuitton and Dior that's sponsoring the vast majority of these business or these videos. It's smaller companies with smaller margins. And I do think that the fees that they're going to pay are going to be less than what the finance companies are going to pay. Do I get why when YouTubers become full-time, you may see more sponsored content and you may, when you're watching it, not enjoy that because it may feel as if there is something being sold to you in so many more videos. And I do hear and see a lot of the criticism on certain videos where if somebody is talking to you, for example, about Ideal Diamonds, which I wear every single day and I will continue to talk to you about, I will continue to work with that company because I really enjoy that company. I wear their products, I value their products. It's something that is integrated into my everyday life. 
but I can understand why whenever you see sponsorships such as like that on content creators that you know only wear Van Cleef or only wear Cartier and you don't ever see them being worn that it can feel a little bit inauthentic and it can feel as if well I know you're not going to wear that because you only wear that level. You're not going to wear these that are accessible to you and I and that I do think can damage channels whenever it feels that it's inauthentic and it feels as if they're only talking to you about certain products because you know they're being paid to do it. For me, and I have always said this, I do not do YouTube full time. Absolutely not. I do not think I would enjoy doing YouTube full time. I think I would feel a lot of pressure. I think it would take a lot of the fun out of it. I like being able to talk to you about what I want to talk about. But I have always said that if a brand reaches out to me and it's a product that I either already wear and like and enjoy or it's a product that I want to try, I'm going to accept that sponsorship. I first accepted Ideal many years ago. I think I'd only been on YouTube not that long. I love their product. So I will continue to accept their products because I will continue to wear their products. I'm also wearing Ana Luisa. I wear Ana Luisa every day as well. I have an Ideal earring, I have my Ideal diamonds, I have my, uh, my Ana Luisa jewellery that is on me basically every day. I recently accepted a sponsorship from Goelia. Their clothes are fabulous. I've worn their clothes to work already and I will be wearing their clothes. And I have no difficulty accepting a brand that I know I'm going to enjoy and I'm going to wear. I also accepted a sponsorship from Atelier Auguste where they gifted this bag to me. And some people may think with the bags that you have, you're not going to use that. I accepted this because I wanted a bag to wear to work. I wear this to work very, very often when I don't think it's appropriate to wear a very high level designer. So that is why I accepted this because I will use it. I also recently accepted a bag from Basile because I wanted to try a belt bag. I wanted to have a belt bag for when I wanted to go either traveling, shopping, didn't want something on my shoulder, I have an old shoulder injury and I wanted to try one of these without paying designer prices. I will accept sponsorships that I think I'm going to wear and love and enjoy or brands that I want to try and I'm not going to apologize for that and that may sound a little bit arrogant but this channel is for me a release and it is fun but it is a lot of work. So if there is a brand that wants to give me something that I want to try and I can say to you that authentically I like that product, I enjoy that product, I want to try that product, I'm going to accept that. And I think for me the key for sponsorships is being true to myself. And Deb said this in her video, it is that it's accepting things that I genuinely think I'm going to like and use and enjoy and not just accepting every single sponsorship that comes my way. I could, if I wanted, have a sponsorship in every single video that I put out. We get so many emails, so many handbag companies, so many makeup companies, so many hair companies, so many, like there are just so much offers made that if you wanted to put one in every video that you could, for me personally, I will accept the brands that I think I will enjoy and I will use and I will continue to do that. And if you don't want to watch that section of the video, fast forward past it. There's no onus on you or there's no forcing you to watch that. It's there if you choose to look and think you might enjoy that product. If it's not, if you don't, don't watch that part. But I do understand how it can become annoying for viewers when they feel that the creators they are watching are putting out constant sponsored content and that you're constantly looking at sponsored content and that you don't know what's real and that came up in the comments a lot that you don't know what's authentic and you don't know if that person actually likes it and I think that's going to have to come down to the actual creator and whether or not you trust that that creator is authentic and you trust that they are accepting things that they think they will like in their life if you then continue to see it if they talk to you about it again in videos that are not sponsored if you only see it in the one video that's paid for that's sponsored you may be a little bit more cynical about whether or not it's actually something that's going to be used. But I think that's going to come down to a judgment call for every individual creator and how you feel about what it is they're showing you and if you feel that they're showing you things that they're going to genuinely like and try themselves. Another thing Deb talked about that she has noticed on the changing in 
luxury YouTube and it being an end of an era is the change in type of videos. That you're not seeing as many reviews anymore. You're not seeing as many what's in my bags. You're not seeing as many unboxings or hauls, although I do think they're still there. And that I think is for a number of reasons. Reviews, I will still do reviews on my channel, especially if it's a bag that annoys me because I think those reviews are helpful. And if there's things about the bag that I find frustrating, I think it's a very useful tool for you if you're thinking about buying that bag and you're thinking about how it is to use it. I think they're helpful and I will continue to make those. What's in my bag? I think I have two, the Neverfill because it fits everything and the Birkin because I use it quite casually but I can see that those videos don't really get the same views anymore. There's so many of them on YouTube and this used to be a area of YouTube that was not that overly saturated. And when people were starting, these were new and interesting and they were novel. So there was going to be a lot more people watching what's in my bag or reviews because there wasn't lots of them already on the platform. Now there are so many videos on the platform that have been around for years, reviewing things, showing you what fits in things, that there is a need to try and come up with new and different content. And if you're continuing to put out the same type of content that used to work a few years ago for views, it's not gonna work the same because there's so many of them. And there's such a saturated platform that there's going to be less people clicking on your video because there's so many of those already to watch. And if you're putting the time into these videos, let's be honest, Nobody wants to make these videos and put the time and effort and absolutely nobody watches them or nobody gets entertainment out of them or nobody gets value out of them. You want to think that when you're making these videos and you're showing things that it's giving something, it's entertaining, it's, it's informative, that people are going to watch it. Otherwise, it would become very difficult to stay motivated to keep making these videos and it's difficult already to keep trying to make content on a very limited niche that is fresh and entertaining. So I think that that is going to lead into the change that you're seeing and you're not seeing as many as those other type of videos that you may have originally seen on YouTube. And I think you're going to see less unboxings and hauls because there is a little bit of luxury fatigue out there, I think. I think there was so much bought and hyped over lockdown whenever we weren't traveling. I, for one, bought a lot more bags during that time, spent a lot more money because I wasn't spending money on traveling. And I definitely am buying less now because I'm pretty happy with where my bags are at. I'm not get, getting rid of them. I'm not having an epiphany. I'm not stopping buying them. But there's just less appealing to me at the minute and there's less that I'm being drawn to. So that naturally means that I'm unboxing less on my channel and I'm having less hauls because I'm buying less. And that is coming from having bought a lot at that particular time, being pretty content where I am now. And also I think that has to feed into the economic crisis that the world is facing. There is an economic crisis worldwide. People are struggling with the cost of living. They are struggling to feed their families. They're struggling with increasing rates, mortgages, interest rates. Everything is having a squeeze. And I think there is a lot less disposable income out there for people to spend on this type of thing. I think there's a lot less interest in this because if you're at a time, even if you're not a luxury shopper and even if you don't spend on these items, but you come here for entertainment and escapism, is it going to be fun to escape in the luxury world if you're struggling to pay your rent? Is it still going to give you that feel good, entertaining escapism buzz? Or is it going to make you feel pretty crap that we're still coming on here and unboxing lots of bags and showing you lots of things and your escapism has to now change because your own circumstances have changed because there's such a squeeze on your own income. And I think that has to be having a knock on effect on luxury YouTube and on what people are watching. And I think that feeds into what we're also seeing with change of content. I do think that people will automatically and naturally change their interests. Some people will just grow out of YouTube, fall out of love with it, get fatigued by it, with luxury I mean, not want to buy it anymore, not want to engage in it, have different interests and will naturally be selling off their things and no longer making, no longer making this type of content. And I do think that there is a genuine set of people that will just move on. Also, there will be others that because maybe there is a need to bring in a certain viewership or whatever, that will see the differing trend in what people are watching and their content will then have to follow and will have to change because this is not going to be appealing to as many people right now. There is an economic crisis out there and they're going to have to try and change their content to buying less of this, decluttering, detoxing, getting rid of this and maybe moving into the content that has a wider appeal. Luxury YouTube is always going to be niche because there's not that many people interested in it. If you move on to then Amazon or different types of 
videos or try to attract a wider audience, there's going to be more people still watching that. Maybe on the negative side of luxury is going to get more views at the moment. And I do think that that cycle is going to feed into what's happening on luxury YouTube and what we're seeing coming out of videos and how we're, people's, and how we're seeing people cycle their content. I think also we'll just see a little bit of boredom because there is a lot of luxury YouTube out there. It's very saturated. There's a lot of people making these videos. I don't watch as many as I used to. I don't watch as many as I did in lockdown, for example. The world got going again, work got busy again, and I know that I watch a smaller amount of creators because I just don't have the energy, I suppose, to watch as many. I also can go through phases where I am not buying as much like I'm in at the moment because I'm pretty settled with where I'm at and therefore I don't need to be researching as many new videos that are coming out on the new collections etc because I'm not looking to buy bags and I think that has to tie into it as well. These are my thoughts on why I think luxury YouTube is changing, where I think it's going, what I think is impacting it on it. I really do hope that Jerusha finds her mojo again and comes back at some point. I hope she has a well earned break and she revives and feels good after it and comes back. I will be here to watch her if she does. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment box down below. What do you think of all this and what do you think the reasonings are? Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it in any way, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing. And if you're not done with me yet, I'm going to leave another video for you on the screen to enjoy. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching me. Please take care and I will see you again in the next one.